Um, I have an image that I'm going to relay to you, and it's going to serve as the foundation for this reading. I've been doing that with the, all the other signs, and it seems like people are pretty receptive to it. And it actually helps me uh, get the overall energy from the spread. So I'm getting a lot of medieval uh, imagery lately, and I just did the Leo reading, and so I feel like it might be specific to the first what the first six signs because of this energy of chivalry um, you guys are generally very courteous and I feel like you know you um, you want to be seen as someone who's polite who has good manners who do things for other people out of the kindness of their heart so there's a sense of chivalry so first of all uh, what I'm seeing is there's a dragon over here it's a green dragon It's kind of plump and kind of chubby so it doesn't look too menacing and it doesn't look like it's it eats people or kills people. It's green and it's on this side. And then I see a, a, a man. He's, he's short. He's probably like five feet three, five feet four. Um, what's funny is he's wearing only a pair of boxers, the heart shaped, you know, boxers. And he's holding a shield and he's walking towards this dragon. And then behind him, I see a, a, a woman. They're about the same age, and it seems like they might be an odd couple. But she's tall. She's like probably six feet tall. She's also holding a shield. She's wearing those medieval dresses. And she's behind him, and they're both headed towards this dragon. So when I saw that, when I saw that, I was just uh, thinking, you know, it seems like there is a major, major thing in your life that you're heading towards or you're doing that you're not fully prepared for. That's what I'm getting. Because the way I looked at this dragon, it looks plump and you might assess the situation like, oh, it's harmless. It's not going to, you know, hurl fireballs at me and roast me alive because in your eyes you're like it's plump it doesn't look too menacing but you're wearing your boxers and you're headed towards this thing that is you know ten times your size it could be very careless with you and hurt you and then there's also somebody behind you a woman or somebody that you know we equ uh, equ equate to as somebody that you're supposed to protect and yet you're leading this person into this situation when it might or might not have a good outcome for for the two of you so i feel like it's important to you know come to situations prepared and if you're going to do something you have to do it wholeheartedly you can't half ass it that's what it feels like to me if you're going to you know head towards a monster even if it's friendly, but you don't know that it's friendly, but it's like 10 times your size, you need to have your battle gear on, you need to have your sword, you need to put on your armor, you need to have a strategy, you can't just tiptoe in and look it directly in the eyes when you're not, you know, equipped properly, okay? So, that is also the messages coming through with the cards. So first of all, first of all, I feel like there is a financial arrangement or a financial entanglement between you and another person. And I feel like with you and the other person, there's a great deal of trust, okay? So I'm not going to um, downplay that aspect because I feel like you trust them, they trust you, there is a sense of mutual trust. And I feel like it was something that was rushed in very hastily. And thank God that, you know, you can trust them and they can trust you. But I feel like it was like slapped together very, very quickly. And then I feel like it, it's gotten a little bit messy to kind of unravel yourself. And I feel like if you ever break up with this person or if you ever stop being business partners with this person it can be very 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 messy so there that's the first thing i'm seeing something that was slapped together in a very hasty manner and it was not well thought out and i feel like you and the other person are figuring things out as you go and it's almost like you know 
um, you're doing things out of necessity and you're like taking it one day at a time. But I don't see any long term goals and I don't see any long term vision. And that really scares me because I feel like, you know, um, things are done so spontaneously that it's really hard for the two of you to have any type of a tangible goal, long term goal moving forward. OK, so that that's what I'm seeing here. I feel, though, many of you have um, it's like you you have in your mind. OK, like um, you're you're envisioning you're envisioning like. I want to have a lot of financial security and I want to be able to take care, of, you know, have the money. I don't need to be a billionaire, but I need to have the money to take care of the people that I love. And I feel like there are a lot of stressors in your life right now. It could be bills, expenses piling up. Um, it could also be like, I, I just feel like a lot of writing that you have to do, a lot of reading, a lot of writing, a lot of projects, a lot of expectations from people. So it seems like it's all around you. And you're taking care of one thing after another. And your free time, I feel, is very severely limited, by the way. You're taking you're t taking care of problems as they creep up. And it's like you're whacking one thing, putting that down, and then another problem would creep up. So you're expected to be like at all places at the same time. And it's really not fair to you for other people to expect that of you. And I feel like all of the other people's expectations really detract you from, first of all, your own free time. And then you have to answer to all of their expectations. You have to be, you know, um, the jack of all trades. And I feel like you're just constantly catering to other people and you're not really able to do anything for yourself. So if you have those long term goals, you know, I want to go to school, I want to get my degrees, I want to take this language course, I want to do more career development, I want to buy a property, all of those goals that you want as an individual, they get put on the back burner. And then other people's goals become your main objective. And so it's really important this week to say no to people. OK, kind of like heading to to see that dragon like I'm not prepared. I can't do it right now. Let's just revisit that in about a month or two months. OK, let me get equipped. Let me be fully, fully prepared because I want to be able to do things well. And if I do something, I want it to have a good outcome. So I feel like you have to really draw boundaries with other people and you also I, I feel almost like there there is something here where you're putting on a very, very brave face. OK, you're kind of like the one that other people rely on for everything. And so it's in your nature to project this very optimistic. Um, everything will be fine. But I feel like you're constantly reassuring other people. Everything's going to be fine. But deep down, you don't feel that way. Deep down, you don't feel that way. And so you need to tell yourself, too, that, you know, it's like you're convincing other people, but you're not really convincing yourself. So it's time to pull back your energy, focus on yourself and not do so much and worry so much about what everybody is doing. We need to get ourselves a little bit more grounded and a little bit more centered. OK, um, for those of you there who might have recently taken on a job. I feel like they're promising you a lot more than they're able to deliver. OK, and then I also feel like for those of you who have a job right now where you are constantly in the public eye, where you're constantly in the public eye, people see you, you're very visible, they recognize you, there might be some fame, some fortune associated with it. There's some type of a backlash. So when things are good, you know, when, when like you um, 
when you make progress, when you say the right things, everyone sees that you're, uh, you're capable and competent. One thing goes wrong, and of course, they're going to blame the person who's the most visible, right? So I feel like there's something here about being very visible. It's kind of like that lightning rod. You know, you're, you're very visible, so when the attention is very positive, it's all on you. And then if one single thing goes wrong, they forget everything that happened before. And the negative attention is focused on you. And so it's, it's very, the energy is very, very extreme. And it seems as if, you know, your performance is heavily, heavily scrutinized or your performance is being heavily monitored. So whatever you're doing at work, be very careful about, you know, uh, if there has been any type of uh, theft, any type of underhanded dealings, if there has been any type of, you know, doing things that you're not supposed to, just um, put a stop to it because we are currently in Mercury in retrograde. And I mentioned this before many times with many signs. It's a time where people slip up. We're not as careful as we need to be and uh, things get found out. OK, so I, I feel there's an element here about secrets being unearthed. We have here the high priestess secrets coming to light. And it could create a big rift between you and other people. Three of swords, separation, pain, anxiety. And so that's what I'm feeling here. Um, there was, when I got the, the image, there was a person. There, there is a person behind you. And um, I feel for many of you, you're with somebody that uh, takes a lot of risks. They're, they're very, very risky. So this can be mild where, you know, they're inspiring to be with, they're fun. And the two of you have, you know, you go on many adventures together. Okay. Like you travel together, you see a lot of cool things, you go to concerts, you, you try a lot of new things together. So it's that, you know, the man and then I see the woman and I'm so sorry, the image was very heterosexual, but you know, for same sex couples, it could be the same way where you have somebody, if you're in a relationship, they're very fun. They, you kind of egg each other on, you experience life together, but from the extreme end, it's somebody that can, you know, um, <laughs> it, it's somebody that you could potentially make very bad decisions with because the two of you egg each other on. Okay. So let's not, um, let it go overboard. Okay. They definitely, um, I feel like there's a, a sense of trust. It, it's a really interesting mix because I, I feel like it's very new, but then the trust develops very fast, which is good. And then I see financial entanglement, like I mentioned with the other person. So I feel like you and another person are just improvising. You could be musicians where you, for example, you're a musician, you're, you play the, the, uh, a musical instrument, they're a singer or they might be another uh, musician. And then the two of you just improvise and back and forth. And you, you create really great music, beautiful music together. One person could be a uh, singer. The other person can play the instrument and you improvise and you can get a crowd, you know, gather around you because the two of you have great chemistry together. And so there's an element of being able to achieve fame from that. But I feel like it's a very risky venture. There's a big element of risk if you're not careful. But I definitely see like um, the ability to improvise with another person, the ability to kind of like telepathically connect with another person where, you know, they hit a high note just as you hit a high note. It's really beautiful. It's hard for us to find people that are, you know, um, that can understand us on such a deep level. So I feel like the two of you have a lot of fun. But um, I, I would say that it's fun, but in terms of, you know, longevity, it might not be entirely stable. OK, um, if you have recently relocated and broken up with like a person from your past, you have relocated like far, you, you've moved far away for a job and you had to break off a relationship. I feel something about it coming around again, or at least you're going to be able to talk 
things out or at least get some closure or at least the other person will check up on you see how you're doing and there can be a transformation in that situation so like you might not be lovers anymore but you could be friends okay so I feel like and they might even you know travel to see you and the things will pick back up again so I don't see an end to a separation but I feel like I feel like the two of you have the opportunities to come back together eventually. Um, it is important though to let go of exes. You're moving on to a new phase in your life. And I feel like, you know, focus on the present moment. Focus on what you're trying to achieve and where you are right now. And like I said, um, you know, we can't half-ass things. We need to come to situations prepared. And a lot of the times, Preparation means stop thinking about the past. Stop living in the past. Stop measuring your life with events, people, situations from the past. You need to ground yourself in the present so that you can be prepared for what the universe has in terms of opportunities for you, new love, new work opportunities, new uh new things in general so i feel like you know preparation is not just about um for example putting on your knee pads or um i don't know like those um the gears the the helmet and the the shin guards and, and things like that for a sporting event it's not just about you know having your sword and your shield and your armor ready getting ready to fight it's all about doing the simple things to simply be in the present moment so that you don't miss opportunities when they're calling to you, okay? And then doing things half-ass as well. I feel like if there is a person from your past that you're thinking about heavily and you're like, okay, I'm, I'm over it. I'm going to get over this person. And you're still like, you know, texting them or you're still like trying to um, reach out you're not over it okay so either convince yourself I'm done I'm over it and just block their number delete their uh, social media account defriend them whatever it takes you have to kind of do it wholeheartedly okay so I feel like there are mixed messages here you're telling yourself one thing but you're still hanging on to a situation and then I also feel as well um, there's a job opportunity I feel coming in for you. And um, the message I'm getting specifically, we have here the Ace of Pentacles. It's in the reverse. And we have here the Seven of Cups. I feel like, and I, I apologize if this sounds a little bit harsh, I feel like some of you, you deserve a lot more than where you are working. It seems like you're either underemployed or underpaid for all the work that you do. And I see you dealing with people that might not be healthy. It's like, it's a kind of a toxic work environment. And I feel like once again, you know, when things are good, um, the attention, there's positive attention, but when things are bad, you might be blamed for things like in like wrongfully blamed for things and so you don't need to put yourself in that situation there are more opportunities out there for you but i i feel like you're hanging on for some type of tenure some type of a promotion some type of a next step and it might be you know four months before you realize i gotta go and that's the time of aquarius so the star card here does show up and I feel like, you know, you might hang on to something, four coins, for another four months before you realize I've got to make a move. So I feel like the March time frame might be the the, the, the last straw, okay? Um, cancers, I hope the reading is helpful for you guys. Um, I hope the messages resonate.